Hello. I'm probably riding my bike. I'm putting all my bags on my bike today, not because I'm going grocery shopping. I'm going to go on an overnight adventure. I feel like packing just for one night isn't really less than a longer tour. But I always pack too much anyway, because I like all my comforts. Let's go. Luckily for me, I live just across the river from the express bus terminal, where I bought the flowers in my other video. You should check that one out if you haven't seen it yet. I'm heading to the east coast in Gangneung. I'm going to cycle up along the beach into the mountains, camp overnight, and then go down into Yangyang. It's about 6.30 in the morning, but I've been up since 4am anyway, watching Arsenal vs Bayern Munich, the life of a football fan abroad. Here I am at the swankiest bus terminal you'll ever see. It's quite busy already for such an early morning. It is a weekday, I guess maybe people are heading off to work. Again, I'm lucky to have the day of work today. All the ticketing is automated now, so the security's new job is to help the people who don't know how to use the machines. Should just keep at least one ticket person on the counter, right? Here we are. I'm getting a VIP bus today. Just park my bike next to these flowers. They use the buses to deliver the flowers all over the country. And we just load our full bike into the bottom of the bus. Super convenient. Just a friendly smile and an annyeong hazeo to the bus driver. I've never had any problems. Most of the time it's just my bike on there. Occasionally I've had one or two other bikes. You can easily fit a few bikes in. Sometimes you might need to take your wheels off. One time I saw a group of eight riders, luckily not on my bus, filling their bikes in the bottom. It was kind of like a game of Tetris. Stay safe, Atlantis. In my university days back in England, I vowed never to take the bus ever again. And then I moved to Korea and you get buses like this, the premium gold express. Glorious. Just close your curtain for some privacy, recline, close your eyes, take a nap. Though I didn't take a nap, I just looked at my phone for three hours. Super comfortable though. Halfway there you get to go to a Korean service station. They got some pretty nice food like these chicken skewers, fried chicken, roast potatoes, some corn dogs. Oh and some hodogwaja. Order on the machine. I went for a corn dog. Is 9am too early for a corn dog? I don't think so. Smothering ketchup and mustard. And enjoy. I ordered some hodu guaja as well. The translation on there says walnut cake balls. They're like fried dough filled with sweet red bean paste and walnuts. I thought red bean paste was kind of weird for a sweet thing when I first came. But now I can't get enough. Super crispy on the outside, soft dough on the inside, delicious red bean paste and walnuts. A comfortable bus journey flew by and we arrived in Gangnam and my bike is fully intact. I'm always full of excitement when I've arrived and I'm getting my bike out of the bus, ready for another adventure. All the flowers have safely arrived too and look at my bike all ready to go. A relatively small city of about 213,000 people. Anywhere feels small compared to Seoul. But any Korean city, just head for the river and you'll find the bike path. This one, you just follow out to the sea. All the cherry blossoms are still out over here. It's a bit cooler than in Seoul. And it's a really nice ride along the river. And I was extremely impressed to see this pump track that these kids were really enjoying. And a bowls lawn right next to the pump track too. The air feels different here and you can feel that you're closer to the sea. And that's the direction I'm going. If you're watching this with someone else or other people, I've got a game for you to play or a competition. Whoever sees the sea first has to shout, I see the sea. And if you're first, you're just a winner. No prize or anything, just the glory of winning. Did you win? Congratulations if you did. Commiserations if you didn't.
and it feels so good to arrive. One of my favourite places. Partly because of this amazing pine tree forest right next to the beach. These little turrets are all over the beach and all over this area. A reminder of how close we are to North Korea, just a hundred kilometers away. But no one's phased by that. They'd rather be kite surfing or having a family picnic or walking the dog or riding a bike. Okay, now time for a bike check. You've seen this bike before in my other videos if you've watched them. It's my Rivendell Atlantis, my dream bike. Just look at these lugs. It's one of the last Waterford made in the USA Atlantises. 56 centimeter frame with 650B wheels. I love it. Just look how cool that head badge is. Poor motor light brakes, of course. Bellow orange double cranks with MKS gamma pedals. And a rapid rise derailleur that I picked up in Tokyo. Rapid rise is slightly better than normal, but doesn't change the world. Wheels made at Rookie Bike, White Industry M15 hubs, and Velocity Simworks rims, standalone. And the best value tyres, Panarisa Gravel Kings, SK. King Cage Iris and Velo Orange Mojave bottle cages. Hitch Kawa Designs bags, stem bag and little frame bag. And this is a bar or saddle bag, really nice for tools. My Swift Industries panniers, I bought the two a long time ago, and I actually won two in a competition recently with Swift. So thank you, Swift. And on to my current favourite handlebars, the Nitto Billies. They're as pretty as the Albatross, a little wider with more hand positions. Pull levers, of course, and some Rivendell shifters, friction shifting. Now this is my all-time favourite saddle, perfectly shaped to my buttocks. After five years, about 15,000 kilometres. It used to be black. The Gilles Bertou Aspin. And the icing on the cake, some Paul Skewers. Such an incredible bike. Let's keep riding. I haven't been riding very far yet. Just started the day really. But there's one meal that we need to have, or I need to have. I'm not with anyone. You're just listening, so I said we. Oui. Gonna have some makuksu, my namesake. I made some makuksu in the other video, but this is a more classic one. I think my favorite makuksu in the whole of Korea, Yongdong makuksu. It's buckwheat noodles and a nice cold meat broth. And the broth has some apple in it for a really nice sweetness. People tell me not to cut the noodles, but they always give you scissors. And if you tell me not to do it, it just makes me want to do it more. And I also got a memu tan, a buckwheat spring onion pancake, like a Korean galette. A glorious meal next to the beach. So, so amazingly delicious. And of course, Clean Bowl Club is the place to be. This restaurant never disappoints. And I'm so happy to have such a great meal. And another chilled ride. With some stops for photos. And some TikTok videos too. Onto the bike lane, which spans the whole of the East Coast, but a lot of it's used as a car park. Some of it's a segregated bike lane like this. And some of it is as amazing as this.
It's so refreshing to ride without the distraction of cars, although this car even stopped for me. And I don't mind the old person walking in the lane. I hope I didn't scare them too much. Even out here riding on the east coast, you're never far from a cafe. And I've got to stop for a nice coffee. It's quite hot today and I need to get some caffeine. Here's Terra Rosa coffee. Not usually my style, it's quite big with a big car park out front, but they had a nice single origin pour over iced coffee. Refreshing. More empty bike paths and some nice campsites. But this is too fancy for me. I'm going to rough it a bit more than that. A fair few markets and seafood restaurants on the way. Let's check out this fish market. Koreans love seafood and they love to buy it fresh, still alive in most cases. They're selling crabs, sea squirt, octopus, sea snails, basically every sea creature that's edible. And lots of dried fish around the place too. These boats have loads of big light bulbs for night fishing. I think it helps attract the squid. And two guys fishing on the harbour. I wonder what they caught. Just around the corner you've got all the beaches with all the surf schools and people learning to surf. More than you used to see. It's quite cool to see more people getting into surfing. And a rare stretch from me. I always forget to stretch when I'm riding my bike. I should do it every ride. And could you imagine going to the school right next to the sea with the pine forest, playing football on this pitch? Next to this statue of King Sejong. We'd be so peaceful. And another reminder of our proximity to North Korea. And a reminder of the country's history, which wasn't even that long ago. Lots of countryside villages have murals like this. Some of them tell more of a story, like the history of Korea. And some of them are just a bit more carefree with kind of an Italian, French, Mediterranean vibe. Just left the East Coast bike path, and this is where the climbs start. I'm heading inland, where they're taking away the trees, probably for a sole apartment complex. And I'm climbing up to my quiet campsite past abandoned houses. past a Buddhist temple, which I've stayed in a couple of times. In the winter, it was really cold outside and I had a really warm, heated floor in my room. It was so cozy. But that's too fancy for me tonight too. I need to rough it a bit more. The gravel paths begin and the climbs. Don't be ashamed of getting up your bike and pushing. It's okay. I did it for quite a lot of this climb. Towards the top, I could get on my bike again. Less of an incline, but still bits of walking. And then the roads got more fun. Not so steep, more flowy. I feel like they're the kind of roads that this bike was designed to handle. Even fully loaded. Up at the top, I wanted to find my perfect campsite. So I just dropped the bags off to have a lighter bike and shred a little bit, as much as I shred anyway, and find the perfect spot. I think they'll be safe there. The bike felt so light and springy after removing all the bags. I loved riding out here. I had the biggest grin on my face the whole time. Felt like a kid again. And I think I found the campsite. Mountains on one side and sea on the other. 
a quick turnaround, a bit of a climb again to go and get my bags. Which were of course safe and sound. Feels good to finally be here after all that climbing. And relax. You can't even hear a car up here. It's one of the quietest spots I've found in Korea. Let's set up my tent. It's a Six Moon Designs tent. Packs up really nice. It only weighs about a kilogram. It's good on hard ground like this. On the beach it's a little harder to set up. And also on the campsites in Korea they all have decking. So it's a little harder than a freestanding tent. But I still really like it. It doesn't take too long to set up either. Quite simple. I haven't got the fanciest sleeping bag. Whatever space my tent saves, my sleeping bag takes up. Any recommendations for a smaller packing one? Let me know in the comments. I'm glad I brought my fleece because it's getting a little chillier now. I've got a few more layers in my bag too. And a couple of hold de to celebrate. Look how grubby I am. But that's okay. There's no one around here. Just you watching this YouTube video. <laughs> The sun is setting, so it's time to make some dinner before it gets dark. You can take the man out of England, but you can't take England out of the man. It's baked beans on toast for dinner. In my opinion, one of the best camping meals there is. No table, but I've got my tablecloth. And I've got my Sudabun sourdough bread from a couple of videos ago. And of course, my Oppenau knife. Heat up your beans, slice your bread. I toasted it on the gas stove and lathered the toast in butter. And here's my meal. Absolutely stunning. Couldn't have been happier. Glorious. When you're camping out here, there isn't much to do when the sun sets. So it's usually an early night. Good night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. An early start, 5.30 in the morning. So I got up for the sunrise, but there wasn't any because it was too cloudy. These are the only people I saw the whole time. I didn't usually sleep well when I'm camping, but I think because I got up at four in the morning, I slept like a log. And now it's time to get some coffee. I love making coffee outside. I've got my Panama washed geisha from Coel. And today I'm making coffee with an Aeropress. I think Aeropress is the best for making coffee when you're camping because it just brews consistently delicious coffee. I find that pour over or drip, there's too many things that can go wrong, too many variables, and you can have some disgusting coffee even if you have really good beans. So in my opinion, Aeropress is the king of coffee outside. It smells incredible, these beans. Kind of guessing the measurement, probably about 20 grams. Fairly fine grind. I can never sit still when I'm grinding, so I always have to walk around. Pour your grind in, just off boiling, and about probably 220 milliliters. Just makes one cup of coffee. Give it a swirl after a couple of minutes, leave it 30 or so seconds, and push down till you hear the hiss. This is all from James Hoffman. He says, if, if you hear the hiss, it doesn't make any difference. Some people are against hearing the hiss. And it was a great cup of coffee. I made a couple more while I was up there, but I don't film every single coffee I make. 
I spent the whole morning up here and didn't see a single other person apart from that quad bike that went past. Listened to podcasts. The best one was The Rest of History, where they interviewed Tom Hanks about all the space missions. Definitely worth a listen. A stunning breakfast of baked beans on toast. Packed up. Ready for another day's riding. Of course, leaving no trace, taking all my rubbish with me. Now I had another good day of riding, but I didn't feel like filming today. I just wanted to enjoy the ride. I do enjoy the filming, but sometimes you just want to forget everything. I think it's fun to end a video with a nice descent, so I'll leave you with one. If you got this far, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. See you later.
Thank you. 